Right. When we talk about Hong Kong uh, specifically and attracting, uh, of course, names to the bourse via uh, these kind of SPAC listings, uh, mm. where do you think the demand will come from? Is there uh, a sector that uh, looks particularly interesting to, to go to market to try and, and raise funds uh, through, uh, of course, this alternative measure? Because when you look at a number of the tech companies, uh, mm. they've already listed in the United mm. States, a number of other companies already listing in the United States. So that's why we've been posing the question, is Hong Kong a bit late? Because what sectors mm. are there out there that uh, would want to take advantage of this? It is a good question. Is Hong Kong too late or is Singapore too late for that matter? We know there are a lot of private companies in Asia keen to list. AP APAC IPOs is up a third to $170 billion last year. Um, however, what we've seen in Hong Kong specifically is Hong Kong was surpassed by mainland China and even India and South Korea saw a boom in new listings. For Hong Kong specifically, proceeds fell significantly down a third to $38.4 billion. Um, but despite that, Hong Kong was still able to attract interesting names like Huai Shou, also interestingly Didi relisted in Hong Kong six months after um, delisting from, from, the, from the New York Stock Exchange. Um, but in terms of SPACs specifically, and is Hong Kong too late? What's really compelling about SPACs for, let's say, Asian companies who may consider that structure is it could take half the time to list compared to a traditional IPO. You could execute a SPAC within three to six months versus six to 12 on a traditional IPO. Also, market conditions. In a volatile environment, SPACs help to navigate volatility because pricing is essentially determined pre-acquisition. And also what these SPACs can do is increasingly they can utilize forward-looking projections versus the more traditional historical financials used on, a, on a, a traditional IPO. And then from an investor perspective, and this is, is going to be crucial to as to whether this is successful in Asia, is the money-back guarantee, which investors essentially get to benefit from, and then the warrants, which they then benefit from on the upside. So investors are very, very um, interested to see what type of opportunities will be available in Asia. And for the corporates, if they can bag strategic sponsors, then they will have guidance post east back, which will help with, with business development. So it does provide another option, another vehicle to come to the market. And we look at a name like, mm. like let's say, Grab in Singapore. Um, that's the story that we saw play out. Now we can look to Indonesia and other um, tech unicorns around Southeast Asia, many of them out there looking for a path to listing. Could SPACs be that path? That's still the question we're, we're trying to answer going into 2022.